Had an issue where you've been given bad looking yellowy footage or maybe you're filming in a terrible lighting situation. Hi, my name's Dan, how's it going? And in this video, I'm going to show you how to correct the skin tones in your footage using the Vectorscope in Premiere Pro. What is a Vectorscope, you ask? Well, a Vectorscope essentially measures the primary and secondary colours, red, magenta, blue, cyan, green and yellow. Basically, the further you are away from the centre of the Vectorscope, the more saturated that colour will be. It is a key tool for colour grading and colour correction work. So no matter what skin tone you're working with, that vector scope is going to be the best graph for determining accurate skin tones. The footage I'm going to be correcting is from a Sony A7S II in a standard picture profile, and the other piece of footage is from a Sony FS7 camera in S-Log3, but this method can be applied to any footage and any skin type. Let's jump straight in. So here is some footage I shot for a performance video on the Sony FS7. It's shot on a flat profile in S-Log3. Don't worry, I'll be showing you how to correct more severely yellowy footage in a sec. I just want to show you the basics first. When you have Premiere Pro up and running, you want to jump straight over to the color tab and select the Lumetri scopes from here. If you can't see the vector scope, click on the spanner icon here and hit the vector scope YUV. And here we are. It may look a bit daunting at first, but trust me, it's going to help loads to nail your skin tones. Now this scope only measures colour and as you can see it's showing us the information of this particular clip. Round the circle of the vector scope it shows us the various primary and secondary colours. The dot in the centre represents no colour and as you move further away from the middle there is more saturation. You always want to stay within this range of saturation otherwise you will clip and distort the colour. We're going to spend most of this time relying on this particular line here. This represents the skin tones. First step is to get the exposure and white balance right. So I'm going to add in some contrast, adjust the exposure and tweak some of the selections here on the tab like so. Then I'm going to select a mask in the area that I consider to be white, which is very easy in this shot. Then I'm going to check to make sure that the white is smack bang in the middle of the vector scope. So now I'm happy with my exposure and white balance. I'm now going to zoom into the head area and mask the forehead. As you can see, the skin tones are roughly along the skin tone line on the vector scope. What I'm going to do now is bump up the saturation a bit to give me a better look of how the skin is lining up. It looks like it's steering towards the reds a little. Go over to the curves and select the eyedropper tool on the hue versus hue curve and click roughly on the mid-tones of the skin. As you can see it's selected the reds we want to adjust and by holding down shift we can move the colour up and down the hue versus hue curve. Bringing down the red slightly puts the skin tones back on the track line for us. Now put the saturation back down and delete the mask. There we have it, we now have a more accurate skin tone balance that we can work from. If we want to, we can now make some small tweaks to the vibrance and saturation to give the colours a bit more punch. Other than that, you're pretty much done. So now let's take a look at some Sony A7S II footage shot in a standard picture profile. As you can see, it has a nasty yellowy look. We've got some fairy lights overhead, fluorescent and tungsten lights mixed in there for good measure too. I don't feel I need to change the exposure much for this shot, so I'm just going to select an area for adjusting the white balance. Wow, as you can see, the white has a ton of yellow in the mix here. So to counteract this, we're going to have to add some blue. This time around, we're going to tweak the blue RGB curves here. The bottom part of the curve will change the shadows, the middle will adjust the midtones, and top will tweak the highlights. We're dealing with the white here, so let's play around with the top area here. As you can see, by adding the blue, it has brought the white back to the middle of the scope where it's meant to be. If you now delete the mask, you can see that it's sorted out the white balance straight away. Much, much better. Let's put a mask on the forehead to see how the skin tones are looking. It's still looking a little yellow, so let's select the mid-tone area on the forehead on the hue versus hue curve. Remember to hold shift and bring the reds up a bit to get that skin in unison with the skin tone line. Perfect. Now if we compare what it looked like originally and now with the grade, you can see the skin is looking way better. All thanks to a little help from the vector scope. Every monitor is different, iPhones, Android tablets, that's why using scopes will always give you the most accurate colours when colour correcting. Knowing how to roughly use a vector scope can really help with correcting footage that you think can't be saved in post. Stick to that skin tone line on that vector scope and you won't go wrong with nailing that perfect skin tone in your videos. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a like, subscribe and hit that bell button. And I'll see you in the next one.